thank God for gathering us once again for this 7 a.m. service. Truly, every meeting is a result of His grace towards us. Yesterday, we witnessed how the generations of Shem, though they were similar in, to the generations of Adam, yet they point to a far greater covenantal blessing, an eternal blessing that is promised to the generations of Terah, particularly to the patriarch Abraham. The reason why it is called the generations of Terah, as we read just now in chapter 11, verse 27, and not the generations of Abraham, is because all the main people that are spoken of in these four sections that we'll be covering over the next few days are the descendants of Terah. Abraham, for example, is Terah's son, as we saw in chapter 11, verse 27. And if we go to that verse again, chapter 11, verse 27, Now these are the generations of Terah. Terah beget Abram, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran beget Lot. And Lot is also mentioned many times in these passages. And he is the grandson of Terah. Sarah, also, who is Abraham's wife, is Terah's daughter as well, just by uh, another wife, as we see in chapter 20, verse 12. Chapter 20, verse 12, it says there, And yet, indeed, Abraham says, She is my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. And not only Sarah, but Isaac as well, therefore, is Terah's grandson, along with Rebecca, who will be mentioned later on, who is Terah's great-granddaughter, as seen in chapter 24, verse 24, where it says in chapter 24, verse 24, And she said unto him, Rebekah says to the servant, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, which she bare unto Nahor. And Nahor is the son of Terah. And these individuals are mentioned in these four sections that Moses gives to us, from chapter 11, verse 27, all the way to chapter 25, verse 11, which God willing, we will cover more, the next section tomorrow, and then for next week, Monday and Tuesday. Throughout these sections, there is one thing that remains the same, namely God's covenant with His people. So if we go to our first point, it says God will fulfill His covenant. From this section, let us notice this, that... <coughs> Sorry, God is the one who will bless. God is the one who will bless. As we read just now, read in chapter 12, verses 1 to 3, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land, notice this, that I will show thee, God will show it. And verse 2, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. God will do it by himself. This is the overarching foundation that envelops this whole section. God has promised to perform this to Abraham, and not only to Abraham, but more so to his seed, as we saw glimpses of it yesterday in chapter 17. But now there are two more passages in this section which speak about the seed. The first is in chapter 12, again, and verse 7. Verse 7, it reads, and the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, 
unto thy seed, unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. And then chapter 13, verses 14 to 17. It reads, chapter 13, verses 14. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that Lot was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes, and look from the place where thou art, northward, and southward, and eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed, to thy seed after uh, forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. To Jesus, as we saw yesterday, will God give this land, for he is the seed that is promised to come. He, God will give this land to Jesus forever. It is to him that God will give a countless number of people who are united in one body to Him. And God and God alone will make sure that this will come to pass. And this Moses records for us, for in between chapter 12 verse 7 to chapter 13 verses 14 to 17 comes two failures on the part of Abraham he wasn't able to have continued to have faith in God all the time. And so we see in chapter 12, verse 10, it says in chapter 12, verse 10, and there, there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. Abram made a decision that was wise in the eyes of the world, to go to Egypt to avoid starvation. But the decision was not wise in the eyes of God, for it was a decision that was made from a lack of faith in the promise of God. And this decision led to another failure, as we see in verse 13. Verse 13, Abraham says to his wife, Say, I pray thee, Thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee. As the husband, he should be the one protecting the soul of his wife, not asking his wife to protect his soul by telling, asking her to tell a half-truth. For even though she is his half-sister, she is more so his wife. Yet despite his failure in these two areas, God still graciously preserves Abraham for his name's sake by plaguing Pharaoh, as we see in verse 17. And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. And God would even go so far to bless Abraham with an increase in sheep, oxen, asses, manservants, maidservants, she-asses, camels, so that it was said in chapter 13, verse 2, when he returned from Egypt, and Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. Is not this what we ourselves observe in our own lives? lives. How often have we given in to temptation when we felt hungry, when we did not have the comforts of this life, when we felt tired, exhausted, defeated? How often that this sin would spiral down to another sin, not only sinning ourselves, but asking and causing others to sin along with us? Do we not feel the wretchedness of our own hearts all the time? Do we not feel our hearts compromising because we fear something or someone? Yet, 
though we fail so often, God never fails. Though we fear others more than Him, He still comes to bless us more than others. His faithfulness towards us doesn't change despite us being unfaithful to Him all the time. God chose us regardless of us and He will keep us regardless of us. This should cause us not to respond by sinning more against Him. That would be the basis of ingratitude that to show towards Him who loves us so much, who has elected us to Himself by behaving like the unelect. If He still loves us despite our failures, let us not go on in failure. Let us go forth with boldness, with confidence, to live in holiness and to take radical steps in full confidence of God's promises. To live for Him who gives us life, to die for Him who gave us His Son to die for us, to carry our cross as His Son has carried His, and to follow after Him. Let everything be done in full assurance of faith for the glory of the One who is faithful to us. And therefore, we go to our second point, we should respond with boldness. This is how Abraham responded to God's promises at first, when he obeyed the call of God to leave the Ur of the Chaldees and Haran, as seen in chapter 12, verses 4 to 5. Chapter 12, verses 4 to 5. So Abram departed in response to God's call, as it says there, as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lot went with him, and Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarah his, Sarai his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. Imagine moving all the substance from, of your own house and bringing it to a foreign land that you have never been before, away from the comforts that you used to possess and to live in tents, to live in uncomfortable conditions because God has called him to do so. And thereafter, Abraham not only entered into Canaan, but after his failure in Egypt, he decided to stay in Canaan. Unlike his nephew Lot, who was allured by the beauty of the plains of Jordan. And therefore, we see in chapter 13, chapter 13, verses 8 to 13. Chapter 13, 8 to 13. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou would take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lord lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere, before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zoar. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent toward Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked, and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. To move from the ancient metropolis of Ur to Canaan, which was at least 1,600 kilometers away, to not choose the Edenic plains of Jordan, which would provide for all his physical needs, shows that Abraham exercised faith in the promises of God. He responded in boldness, not following what the world will pursue after, but held firmly to the call that God gave him. We find this highlighted through the contrast drawn between his failure 
in going to Egypt, as we saw earlier, and his faith in striking the four kings that took his nephew Lot. And so we, if we move to the next chapter, chapter 14, and we look at verses 14 to 16. Chapter 14, verses 14 to 16. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. And he divided himself against them, he and his servants by night, and smote them, and pursued them unto Hobah, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods, and also brought again his brother Lot, and his goods, and the woman also, and the people. Look what it says here. He armed, he pursued. See the man who was so afraid of King Pharaoh, even to hide himself behind his wife. Now he arms, he pursues, he divides, he smites four well-trained and well-equipped armies with just 318 servants. Nothing can cause such a drastic shift in a man's conduct and behaviour except that which is outside of him. He had the strength to do the impossible because he knew that nothing was impossible for the God who had made such peculiar and precious promises to him. And therefore, in point three, and dependence upon God, upon him at all times. This is what Abraham constantly did right after receiving the promise of God. Knowing God's promises did not cause him to take advantage of God's mercy by sinning that grace may abound. No, it caused him to depend more upon God, to trust more and more in God. And therefore, right after the promise God made to him and to his seed in chapter 12, verse 7, it is said in the next verse, chapter 12, verse 8, and he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel, which means the house of God, and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west and high on the east. High means living. And there he built an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. Just as Seth and his descendants did, just as Noah did after the flood, this he did again right after the promise given to him and his seed. In chapter 13, chapter 13, verses 14 to 17. And then we read in verse 18. Then Abram removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is Hebron. Hebron means fellowship. And built there an altar unto the Lord. He sought to be in the house of God, to have fellowship with God, because this is what life is. This is where life is found. He knew that from God would he have the strength to respond in boldness and dependence. The Christian life is a very interesting life. We are to go to God at every time. We are to go to Him for the strength that we need so that we can continue to trust, continue to depend, continue to rely upon Him. This Abraham did in every situation, for when he sinned in going down to Egypt, he in the same way went back up to Bethel. So if you look at chapter 13, verses 3 to 4, and he went on his journeys from the south even to Bethel unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Hai unto the place of the altar which he had made there at the first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. He knew that failure should not drive him from God but to God. He knew that he could not pick himself up by his own might but had to bow his knees and say, God, be merciful to me, 
a sinner. And this he did even in his success, not only in his failure, but in his success. He did not pride himself in his own military skills and capabilities. But when Melchizedek, who was a type of Christ, both being the king of Salem, which is also Jerusalem, and being the priest of the Most High God, as Jesus is our great high priest, Abraham gave him a tenth of all that he possessed after Melchizedek had blessed him. And so we see in chapter 14, 14 verses 18 to 20. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which have delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave him fights of all. This is the example that we ought to follow. Whether in failure or in success, we need to attribute all our strength to God. Have you sinned against the Lord in thought, word or deed? Have you caused others to sin alongside you? Go to God in repentance and faith. He is able to restore you. He has promised so many things for you. And shall you shy away from going to Him? Don't hide as Adam and Eve did in the garden. Go back to the house of God, as Abraham did go back to Bethel. Have you been blessed with success? Have things been going well for you? Have you been bold for the Lord? Go to God. This strength is not your own. This strength was given by Him to you. All the more then, don't lord yourself in your own abilities. How subtle our hearts are in doing so. Go to the greater Melchizedek. Hear once again where the source of your blessings flow from. Fight to Him that which He has in the first place lent to you. Let us this day take courage in the Lord who is the possessor of heaven and earth. He who possesses all things would not withhold from us anything. For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank Thee for such precious promises that Thou hast given us. We know that Thou hast called us to be Thy children. That thou hast called us away from this world. Thou hast called us to be lights in this darkness. Would Thou help us to do so? Help us to know that Thou art with us. Thou art the Almighty, the one who provides all the strength that we need. Thou who can do the impossible, please help us when we feel like our situation is impossible to overcome. Help us to trust that Thou will work all things well as Thou hast promised. Bless us now for the rest of the day as we go ahead in Thy strength. This we ask and pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen.